And action, and welcome everybody. This is BNP Weekly, episode 238. It is 26th of February, 2024. At least I got the year right. So that's yes. a great start the on the Monday morning. Yes. And the number. <laughs> well, the date was actually written in here, so, and the number. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, today uh, in the BNP Weekly, we will talk about the latest on Microsoft 365 uh, and the related technologies like Power Platform and GitHub and all of that stuff. And we do have a visitor today who is Today's our guest is Brett Lonsdale. Brett has been around in the N365 and SharePoint community for a long, long, long time. That's true. That's true. He he had been actually in the BMP Weekly in the past as well. I can't remember which Correct. episode. Which Correct. I will probably need to check, double check before we start the recording with him. Um, but it's 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 good to have him back. And he has some new roles related, for example, called community area. So he's taking a uh, uh, what, what's the right way of a board role within the European Collaboration Summit? And we talk about a bit about what that conference is all about, and of course his day-to-day -day work, which is the Lightning Tools, uh, which is a, a ISV providing services for customers and partners. Without giving away too much, how about we dive into the 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 interview? Sounds good. Let's jump in. Excellent. Let's get started. So welcome, Brett, joining on the PMP Weekly. Uh, and we did, by the way, forgot about Waldeck to see when was he here last time, because you've been in a show last at some point. A couple of times. Yeah, it, it must be two years, I would imagine, something like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, thank like you that. for welcoming back. Really yeah, absolutely. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Fred. <laughs> we were chatting before on the intro that we need to double check when were you actually in the, in the show last time. But, you know, uh, I'm doing it yes. now. Let's see. Let's see how fast I'll be able to do that. <laughs> but so many things are it's changing loading. in technology uh, and in work areas within two years or a few years. So it's good to always uh, get people back. And I think we promised that we'll get you back. So here you are. So. Here I am. Yeah, you were, yeah, you well. were on episode 76 and 189. Okay, cool. Cool. Right. So that's 50 yeah. episodes. Yeah, that's actually yeah, one and a half years easily. That's really good. Now, there what has go. changed? But, but for those who don't know who's Pret, uh, who are you and what do you do for a living? Let's do a quick recap on, on things. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So, um, yeah, again, thank you for inviting me on the show. I really appreciate it. It's always good to see you too. Um, but uh, yeah, first of all, uh, I guess, who am I? Uh, so, yeah, Brett Lonsdale. I'm uh, the founder and CEO of a company called Lightning Tools. And uh, that's been something that I've been doing now for uh, 17 years. Um, which um, has absolutely flown by. And uh, prior to that, I was uh, an instructor. So um, this was when uh, Microsoft SharePoint was uh, was created. I was working for what we referred to as a CTEC back then at, at the time. And um, Microsoft Learning hadn't really produced anything in terms of learning SharePoint. There was a, like a, a SharePoint workshop that consisted of four pages. And uh, me as a, an ASP.NET developer, I was tasked with, well, go and teach this SharePoint thing. and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I uh, managed to play around with this product and it seemed clear that I could yeah, create these boxes that went on a page and they could do stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't really have a good understanding of what SharePoint was at the time. And um, yeah, yeah there's a lot of people in the same boat. So uh, I formed um, with a couple of other guys, uh, Combined Knowledge, which uh, you probably know very well. And um, around about uh, 2007 time, that sort of era, uh, I uh, got into, um, well, the, the need, I guess, to, to get my hands dirty again and uh, writing some code. And there was an opportunity to work with Nick Swan. And um, we uh, we built uh, BCS Metaman or BDC Metaman, as it was then, sort of specializing in the, in the business data connectivity world. And I, I think that's probably something that we could maybe talk about because obviously uh, BCS is now deprecated and uh, there, sure. there's other opportunities. Yep. Um, but yeah, ever since then, we've been really looking at, uh, well, how can we help people to, uh, to to work better? How can we help organizations work better with Microsoft SharePoint? And of course, this has now evolved into uh, Microsoft Teams as well. So as with any any software platform, there's uh, there's always things that people want to do uh, that may require development and, and so on. Uh, but not everybody has that time. And that's really where Lightning Tools comes in. We, uh, we build some products that will help extend SharePoint, make things easier for you to do. Um, yep. And uh, and yeah, that's where we are today. So uh, so that's the the, the the company that we've built, and um, we are based here in the UK. Uh, so um, in a brand new office, as you mentioned, I say brand new. Uh, you will notice that none of the walls are straight. 
there's uh, there's very old beams. You have to be careful not to lean on it. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> but, yeah, by I think design, it's, it's been right? By design, maybe like five or six hundred years or something like that. So yeah, uh, that's really cool. Lock it down. <laughs> but really cool. uh, yeah, it's called the Cottage, uh, and it's uh, it's in the centre of a town called Lutterworth, uh, which is uh, very central to England. And believe it or not, it's where the the jet engine was first invented. That happened just down the street here. So a uh, bit of history for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's where we're based, and we also have uh, a uh, an office over in um, Orlando as well. So, uh, so that's where we tend to serve a lot of our North American customers in, in terms of tech yep. support and, and so on. Yeah. And so. on top of all of that, you're also an MVP. They're like, there's this one thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the first ones to go up. It's like new office. Thinking about coming back on the, on the establishing the, and creating that company and um, you've gone a wrong mm. way from that moment. And a lot of changes has happened since, right? So it's, it's probably never thought about where you would be right now when you establish the company. Was that, or was this like, oh, I yeah, know where I'm going to be all in 70 years. Yeah, and this is all part of the plan, or <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that's a great question. It's it's, it's also um, one that we can uh, address with conferences as well about you know just putting yourself in the right place at the right time. So there are a lot of yep. people say about uh, you know, being in the right place at the right time, but you can put yourself in the right place uh, as well. And yep. um, yeah, really, that that's that's kind of what happened. So uh, you know, there was. Um, Nick Swan, uh, as I mentioned, he was also a Microsoft MVP at the time. Um, he was working with Todd Baginski, uh, who you know very well. And uh, yeah, they were um, collaborating on uh, on building a, a tool which uh, was BDC Metaman. Yep. And um, the opportunity arose for them because they were actually at the MVP summit. They saw that yeah, there was this wonderful new thing called the Business Data Catalog, um, but there was a, a stop short of well, you have to write this XML file if you want it to work. And um, and that's where immediately they um, started collaborating on, well, let's build a UI for this. And, and that's what uh, BDC Metaman uh, became. So the, the the tool was pretty much already built for version one uh, when I came into uh, version. But um, yeah, there was me looking to get my hands dirty and um, I did sort of got involved with the SharePoint user group in the UK. So that was the step that I'd taken. And that alone, created the conversation with, uh, with with Nick Swan um, about, yeah, this is what I want to do. And he's like, well, we're really looking for somebody to come on board uh, with some uh, some business experience that might be able to help us and uh, and build a company around this. So yeah, it, it, it just shows that yeah, user groups or uh, conferences, events, um, you can put yourself there and you know, rather than just hiding behind your laptop all day long, if you take yourself to one of these events, there's, uh, there's opportunities that just arise. Um, yeah. yeah. But okay. since then, uh, yeah, I, I I was given this analogy by my by my business coach that um, I've been very much like a, a pilot flying a plane, and we are flying. We're we're moving forwards, but without a sense of any direction. <laughs> um, and this was sort of <laughs> six seven years ago, where my issue was that I felt that we'd plateaued as a company. Yeah, we weren't growing anymore, and and so on. And he's like, it's because you haven't got a vision. You. you you've not painted that picture as to where you want to go. And as soon as you paint that picture, you're going to start heading towards it. Right. But until that happens, you're just flying and, you know, things you're being like very turbulence. Adventurous, right? like, hey, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, like, uh, which which is, is also a great it, thing. <laughs> I mean, yep. isn't, it, isn't it exactly what they say? Like, uh, like you get the right folks on a bus and you will come where you want to be, right? Like that's also like another business analogy you hear a lot. But it's you all about getting the right people on the bus. Direction, right. you know, the yes. doesn't matter as long as you get the right people on the bus. So like yeah. in a way you got the right people on a plane, but then the plane also needs to have a, fly, a, a flight plane plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there could be a storm and you decide, well, okay, I'm going to avoid that storm and you end up going in a completely different direction. Yep. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you've yep. got a vision, it's like, well, I might avoid that storm, but then I'm going to steer myself back on track again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we're yeah. going to go to where we're, we're heading. So yeah. And within this yep. journey, you've had some storms like pandemic and all of that stuff and changes and, and product changes and Microsoft 365 and all of that stuff. And, and again, BDC Metaman uh, is a really good example of BCS. Uh, and then all of a sudden Microsoft moves to the cloud and that's no longer relevant. And then you need to make decisions on moving forward and evolving the product portfolio. So um, that those yeah. are hard decisions, right? Oh, yeah. 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 And I guess yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe to add to that, right? Like 
technology has changed, but I mm -hmm. bet that the customer need doesn't. Yeah. So I wonder like how to what to what extent do you build on a platform, build on a product versus answer a customer need, or how do you you balance actually the the two? Yeah. Uh, great, great questions. Because sometimes I feel like, you know, I'll, it, I'll often somebody will come up to me uh, and say, what's new at Lightning Tools? And you feel the answer sounds like you've been quite stale. It's like, yeah, well, we haven't really got any more products or anything like that. You know? um, but they've actually really evolved, the, the, the product. Because yeah. as, as you mentioned, the need is still there. And we're still addressing that same need. And yeah, Microsoft, um, as they're evolving their tools, sometimes, you know, you, you improve your product and that just sparks another opportunity, not necessarily a new product idea, but a new enhancement. Um, and yeah, you, you mentioned uh, earlier on about AI and, and so on. And every single time that there's uh, a new announcement, it's like, how can we apply this? Or, or do we need to do anything here and, and go through that, that, that question? Or yeah, just let this play out and it's, it's cool, but it's not going to involve us. Um, yep. Or yeah, this is something that absolutely we should take advantage of. And um, there's, there's a whole new opportunity that we, we could, uh, could use. So, so where does that attitude come from? Because a lot of the partners then at the same time are saying, well, Microsoft is eating up our business and you, you Microsoft should not do blah, 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 and blah, 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 and, and being negative towards Microsoft innovation. You clearly are like, yeah, Microsoft innovates and, and we'll figure it out. Uh, where, where, <laughs> how, how do you approach this situation differently? Or what's the, what's the thinking point there? Uh, so I, again, I might just, revert back to, uh, to to some of the uh well the, the experiences that i've had with, with a business coach i think is uh is, is a great place to, to start and um it's really simple to be the the victim in a lot of all of this that that you know that, that there could be a, other other concerns um going on inside a, a an organization uh that are yeah slowing you down or like say you know make, making you um plateau like like we did um and you end up in that uh, sort of everything always happens to me kind of mind frame. <laughs> and uh, who can I blame for, for this going wrong? <laughs> and everybody but yourself. And the, the first thing that my business coach uh, taught me was to look inwards. It doesn't matter what's going on uh, in, in, inside the organization. Um, start at the top. Start with you and, uh, and look at how you've affected this situation. And it's amazing, even if it's just something that somebody else has done, but you've allowed it to occur and you've allowed it to affect you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, I think, you know, that that's just probably trained my mind into thinking, well, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of uh, some examples. So there's one that's a long, long time ago, uh, which was uh, the highlighted content web part when that was introduced. Yep. And first thought was, all right, I think this is going to really kill the lightning conductor, our, our, yep. our aggregation tool. Highlight the um, content query web part, content query yeah. web part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a PNP one as well. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, okay, is this going to affect the lightning conductor? And, yep. and so on. There's, there's, there's always that um, thought process that you need to go through. Um, but then you can take a look at everything and think, well, what, what are we doing differently? And it might be that you're doing something better. Um, and even to the point where you know they don't have to spend money um, is, a, is a major advantage. Uh, whereas with us, they're they're, they're parting with uh, some cash in order to be able to buy a product. Um, but then there's also things that they get, such as the support behind it and the training that they need, and, and so on. So there's always different. Um, yeah, uh, competition isn't bad. <laughs> I, I don't right. think. Now, clearly, yeah, there's something that Microsoft could could launch that um, may be uh, a. a huge concern for us. Um, it might be that we need to change direction, but so far that's not really, really happened. I wouldn't say yeah. there's actually been a lot of times where that's happened, even with uh, SharePoint designer, when that came out, <laughs> that's, that's going to kill, <laughs> that's going to kill BDC Metaman. And again, <laughs> you know, cause, uh, cause now, you can break the, uh, no, <laughs> no, no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it's actually, yeah. so you mentioned quite a few, few things, right? So one is like being CEO, the buck stops with, with you. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. basically, like, it's like you need to get into the mindset, like you're in control, you decide what's going to happen and yourself um, and also what is not going to happen. And I guess that is really hard, right? Because like, if you are not wired that way already, mm -hmm. and you step into that role, it's hard. Because every single yeah. time, well, it's on you, like the onus is like, you got to do it, you got to say it, you got to, what are we going tomorrow? And in three years, and in five, like, like, where do you want to go? 
right? So I can imagine, like, how did you how did you go about? It? Like you mentioned, you have a, a a coach. Is that how you kind of get the feedback and learnings and basically the experiences from the field from somebody who has been there, done that, and went through that? And it's like, yeah, like you want to pay attention to do especially that part. Is that how you learn? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now he started off as my business coach, but actually he uh, he he's also um, uh, like a psychologist in a way. <laughs> you know, he, he'll he'll just a, ask the questions. A therapist, like a therapist. Yeah, it's all about asking the questions, and it's 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 amazing how you know you could be um, know, having cash flow problems or what, what, whatever it might be, and the first question always from him is. How have you contributed towards that? How did you let that happen? <laughs> it's it's not it's not a case of looking outwards and saying, yeah. "Well, introspect." Yeah, who, who's not paying yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, uh... Well, it's always you, so so that answer is really fast, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, and, and it's amazing just by answer asking that question that in your mind you immediately come up with the answer. It's like, yeah, I, th this has occurred because you know I wasn't strict enough, or I didn't have a strong enough agreement with the customer, or I didn't <laughs> do this. Um, yep. And yeah, there's there's always a, an area there that you can think, well, yeah, I, I now need to improve that. And, uh, and right. then you can build on it. Right. So if anything else, like you would probably recommend to everybody to find that person with whom they can Mentoring. build the trust yep. and from whom they can learn. Yes. Yeah. It, I, I'd say it's been a real game changer for me. And um, yeah, it, yeah, you don't necessarily need... Uh, a coach, I would say, but yeah, there, there's so much content. I, I I don't know if you watch the uh, the Jay Shetty uh, podcast. I, I get so much value from that one, where he interviews a lot of celebrities and and, and so on. Um, they get quite deep <laughs> sometimes, but it's amazing the the, the value that you can get out of that for free. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's yep. just uh, go ahead and watch it, and it's uh, it's amazing content. And it and it doesn't have to be like said. It doesn't have to be a paid thing because mentorships can just happen with among friends and you know mm -hmm. brainstorming and and doing things. Uh, those are incredibly incredibly valuable things um, to happen. So I'm watching the wild egg on yeah. the screen as well because we do quite a lot of random brainstorming sessions, and then all of a sudden you feel <laughs> yeah. much better. And you're like, yeah, that actually helped a lot. Yeah. So yeah. that was actually really oh, good. So. <laughs> Well, yes, yeah. that's that's only because of you, Valdek. Absolutely, one hundred percent. No. Um, now, now, something what you mentioned there related on the you know the threats uh, for you as a partner providing ISV and SI solutions, whatever you you do both, but that's that's a mm -hmm. separate, kind of a separate discussion. How do you see the community work and open source impacting that? Because that has. I, is it fair to say that it has grown from what it was back in you know 2007 because we didn't have github now we have github we have this lot of samples yeah. and and we do community uh, projects and cli for micro trees it's 5 pmp power share, all of that so there's a lot of lot of stuff which people are being used are you seeing those as a threat for you or is it more like in growing the ecosystem together or well, how do you say that yeah, it, it, it's growing the ecosystem for, for sure. And, you know, I know um, our developers, uh, they get a tremendous amount of experience from actually building stuff themselves. Um, yep. they, they listen to a lot of your podcasts. Um, you know, they're, they're growing uh, their own skills. They're growing their own knowledge uh, by, yeah, listening to what you're doing. They're, they're submitting um, suggestions and, and so on into that community. And it, it sometimes gives you inspiration to build onto our products as well. So um, yeah, there, there's absolutely that, and like I say, you know, the the uh, the aggregation tool that, that you offer is is a prime example. Uh, that was actually the inspiration to say, well, what else can we do in this product? Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we, we we grew that to not just um, aggregating SharePoint list and library content, which which is what it did do, but now it's evolved into yeah, connecting to uh, to all the different uh, graph APIs uh, without having to write any code, which is really what our audience is so you don't have to write any code you can connect to to OneDrive or, or, or Teams and, and query that um, and then we also extend it to the external connector as well which we learned that we could do through the uh, to, through the group um, and and now yeah if you want to go and get Salesforce data coming into the Lightning Connector you can do that too so yeah. that has yeah created um, some really clear opportunities in fact we ended up killing one of our other products by doing that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was <laughs> it's evolved, right? Like, it's like evolved. Evolved. Yeah. yes, indeed. 
Indeed. Yeah. But again, there's an advantage there because I will, these two products, we had a, a product called the Data Viewer, uh, which uh, is still alive. Um, it's it's something that you can connect. It, it, the story was you can always connect to external content, but it was connecting directly to things like SQL and uh, yep. or XML or whatever and bringing that, that data in to build a chart or build a grid view. And I was like, okay, well, the Lightning Conductor can now do all of that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, we, we're sort of ending up maybe needing to to merge two products yeah yeah but but it's also like it makes sense you know because as technology evolves and other things around you change you get new insights and you think about like new how people look at like the the way we look at problem problem problems now is not the way we looked at them three years back five years back yeah. right so mm -hmm. even that changes and while the need is there still there you know perception change changes uh uh skills change and also there's, there's this interesting thing I learned the other day. Somebody made me uh, aware of that is that oftentimes when we deal with change, we're thinking about, you know, the same people doing new things. And one mm -hmm. thing that, that we lose in there is that people move on and there is new generation of folks who don't share the sentiment from the past and they are here to do the, the new thing. And for them, yeah. it's like intuitive because like, like they, they don't know a different way to do it. So in other words, mm -hmm. like they would just step into it with, you know, clean slate, fresh eyes, and you're like, hey, yeah, that's the way to do it. Done. Yep. Right? So yep. that also has, I think, a big say in things like adoption, change, mm -hmm. and just doing new things. Yeah it's, yeah, it's no longer transforming the people's behavior. It's just telling them that this is the way it's done, and that's it. And there's there's no kind of a, that denial which we need yeah, to Yeah, but for. also to hear from them what is intuitive to them. And yeah. I wonder, how do you, how does that play in into features you plan for your work? Like, how do you see, how, how, how do you bring the new wave of uh, uh, employees into building your product features and the roadmap? Yeah, uh, great. Well, I, I think the, the, the first thing um, when we're bringing new people in is to certainly look at um, are, are, are we aligning with them as well? So again, that's, that's probably a, a slightly different way of, of, of thinking for uh, some organizations. But yeah, getting to understand their needs, their goals, their lifestyle, and, and so on. I think gone are the days where it's like, well, let's let's just hire somebody on a nine to five job and expect them to do this job and and, and so on. It's you know, are, are they aligning with this? Is it actually going to serve them uh, as well as them? Uh, serving us and, and aligning with our vision, as, as we we spoke earlier on, um, and I think the the other um, aspect is what, what, once you've understood that uh, and you've created the framework for them to to learn and to to evolve in the company, if they can understand that vision and the direction that you want to go in, then it, part of that is innovation, <laughs> and yeah. uh, we're, we we need to have some somebody that does want to innovate, somebody that wants to improve consistently not think that they're the finished product and uh, want to continue to learn and, and so on. And then they just adopt it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we're constantly looking for improvements. We're, um, we're also reaching out to our customer base to, to um, get, get their suggestions as well. One of the things that we're uh, recently implementing, which we hadn't done before, it was kind of ad hoc feedback that we, we reacted upon before, but we're, we're now creating uh, an insider program so that, yeah, we can get into the minds of the people that are using the products every day, look at where we need to improve to serve them better and, and so on. And we can, yeah, build a better That's picture really, really from, cool. from that point. That is really cool. And so all of that only works if you're willing to put yourself out there in, you know, the, 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 in a way in, with uh, the beginner's mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. also, you know, like that, it doesn't, to many folks, it feels, you know, th threatening because like, I don't know, what if I, you know, show that I don't know everything? Like, will people mm -hmm. think less of me? Will they not no longer see, see it as an expert? So how do you deal with that uncertainty and putting yourself out there and saying like, yep, you tell me, I'm here to learn. I want to genuinely learn from all of you. How do you do that? Yeah. So, yeah, we're... we're with uh, what well, overcoming that fear is is uh, the, the the key part, and I think we could maybe loop that into the events as well because I used to be fearful yep. um, of, uh, of of going in and putting myself into that environment. Uh, 
before I was involved in uh, the, the Microsoft world, I used to be a Lotus Notes developer. Don't kill me for that one. But <laughs> so, um, I, we'll I talk remember. about that one next time you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to have an event called uh, Lotus Sphere, and um, I, I can remember, uh, yeah, being relatively new to, to this uh, to this environment and um, trying to get my head around Lotus Script and uh, what what have you, and. There was this event and I didn't go to it because I was fearful of you know being the beginner. And what if somebody asked me a question, or what if I oh yeah, stand out like a sore thumb and all those thoughts that come into your head that just aren't true whatsoever, <laughs> but they were there and it actually stopped me from, from going. And you know, I, I could have missed out on, on all sorts of opportunities as a result. Yeah. And I think that's what's different about if you do overcome that fear and just think, well, I'm just gonna throw myself into this and see what happens. Yeah, even even coming onto a show like this, it's like you said don't plan anything. It's like, what are they going to ask me? <laughs> what if I can't <laughs> oh, answer the questions? You know, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't help but have that that <laughs> fear there. Um, and Vesa, I can remember the first time I uh, met you in in person. Um, you were stood by the uh, by the lunch. You were just grabbing something. I think you were about to head off to a session. I'd never spoken to you before, and I was thinking, oh, there's Vesa. It'd be great to introduce myself to, to Vesa. <laughs> but then there was this barrier where it's like. Uh, yeah, Vessa's like way up here. But you know, I, I went over in there and I, I introduced myself, and uh, you said, "Ah, oh, yeah, hey, Brett, have you tried one of these?" <laughs> you know, I was, I was probably on a diet or something at the time. I thought, oh, "I'm going to eat that cake just because Vessa said to." <laughs> but it was, the power it was of great. recommendation, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Huh. But but yeah, there is that sort of um, fear factor that you, you you quite often have, and and you can yeah, yeah overcome that, it. Um, so related on that one, the one learning what I did, I, I have a eight years consulting in Microsoft Consulting Services background, and and if there's a one learning from those eight years, because that was high end consulting in CXO level, was to realize that every single human being is human being like any other human being so you don't actually the the fear what you're just explaining on on but what if you know they're they're, they're high level in whatever you know pyramid oh, of your appreciation heroes, right? or whatever I mean, yeah but it's it's like no 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 they're they're humans they they still do the exactly the same thing as you do and then they have their family and then they worry about exactly the similar daily things as anybody else and and that actually helps on then you know let's have a discussion about yeah. the world and then we're on the same table about and, cake yeah yeah, about, <laughs> about, cake. <laughs> about cake, whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> but there is this this kind of a there, there's always and I I I, I guess there's this there's always this kind of acknowledgement uh, on people you know appreciation levels and and be, some people are being more known maybe in internet or in social media or whatever, but they're still humans. They they have exactly the same you know fears and balances and life as we everybody else does and. Yeah. That helps on having that engagement because engagement, because then you can start a discussion and and you realize that well actually yeah they're they're not you know they're like us so whatever yeah, that means absolutely and if you take something like the you know the club summit or they're a person summit, oh my god this is normal, this is normal person. <laughs> <laughs> yes but call up something this a good a really good European collaboration I mean this an awesome example um, and yeah uh, that's coming back on that one because you, but you're just guiding us into it because it, it it is really the intention is making people to meet other people so yeah and and, and you know we I've got this uh, role at the moment of uh, doing a lot of the social media and it's like you can't get this across in 140 characters <laughs> you know yes. what yes. that knowledge and networking means I mean you're saying True. it in words but you. The, I've been to Collab Summit um, as a presenter, as a sponsor, as an attendee, and now I'm one of the organizers. <laughs> so I'm sort of checking all yep. the boxes there. But um, yeah, first of all, it's got Addis's signature all over it. Um, you, you, you're entering the Addis world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've, we've seen that event grow up from the, the early days when it was in uh, Zagreb and, and so on. And it was a much smaller event, but you could see then that yeah, the, the attention to detail that he's put on it. Uh, but he also wanted you to experience you know, his, his, uh, the foods that he likes and the drinks that he likes and the, the music that he likes. It's, <laughs> that, that's what I mean by it's got his signature on it. And it doesn't matter who you are, if you're gonna introduce yourself to Addis, you're gonna be greeted by this, if, if not a hug, a huge smile, because <laughs> that's who yeah. that guy is. And uh, yeah, the, the, the event um, 
that's just the, the feeling that you get throughout it. It's it's just tremendous. And if if you and me, um, you know, 20 years ago, concerned about going to the Lotusphere and, and you're the same sort of thing going into, into one of these events, um, it doesn't matter if you know nothing about Microsoft 365 or Azure or OpenAI, whatever it is, if you go to one of those events, you're going to learn and you're going to network. And uh, the, the network side, the, the opportunities that you can get from it are just outstanding. I mean, it, it could be the next thing that you know, projects you in your career uh, or uh, it, it could be the next business opportunity or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's yeah. Just, just amazing what can what can occur there. Yeah, and, it, and, and, and it's also like the, the first step is horrifying. You know, oh my God, I'm going to introduce myself to hmm, and and that's basically a hero of yours, right? Like a person, like oh my God. But then when, once you do that, you realize, well, they're just a person, and it's like yeah. you're. It's exactly that. All these opportunities are one handshake high away. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. not that like there is no you know stars aligning or science to it. Just yes, you have you, to. You're putting yourself there. Step. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like bring bring others. Like if you, if like you want to do it one on one, come with a group. I don't know. Like go to your stance. Like if anything else, like maybe share some of your uh, experience that you've got from being a spon spon sponsor and having a stand. Because I can imagine one thing that you that you want more than anything else is to talk to folks who come to these events, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, and, and play some Xbox for a while. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. I yeah. guess you have the Xbox in spring. Do you have the Xbox? Maybe, it's maybe not in the bar now. A Lego set? A Lego set? Will there be a Lego set? No, 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 set? it's not There will Lego. be a Lego set. <laughs> there will be a Lego set. There you go. There, there is always a Lego set. That's just um, <laughs> Yeah. But also, I would, for anybody who is visiting this kind of event, so European Collaboration Summit is awesome. The, the, the atmosphere is friendly. And also the people who keep on showing up there are, you know, the community people who've been in the community for, for many years, they are actually typically pretty, you know, easy to get along with and, and easy mm -hmm. to approach with and welcoming and all of that. So, and of course there's different people, there's some people who really wanted to have the MVP status, like the MVP plaque, what you have behind of you, uh, and then checkbox done, and then I move on. And it's okay, people mm -hmm. do that, but then those people who've been, years and years within the community typically they are there to help you to get involved and and get you involved in as well and help you to succeed within your career because it's 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 about the yeah. community so yeah oh, i once overheard um a conversation i think it was on a bus or, or something uh, leaving a conference and they were saying about how clicky the speakers are and how unapproachable and i was like, Oh, are we talking about the same set of speakers here? Because, <laughs> but, but then I looked at it from their eyes, and it's like, yeah, we're, we we might be seen in a bar or drinking together or or something, in it, forming in a circle. But if you walked into that circle, you'd have been completely welcome. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just that we're all friends. That it's really hard <laughs> yeah. to know that. Right, yes. so maybe we need I don't know some kind of badge that that you can wear. Like, I'm, okay. <laughs> yes. I'm okay to talk to Come you. Come join us. Like, you <laughs> can disturb me anytime you want. You know. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, some, somebody could have just entered that circle and and they'd, they'd been part of that group. Yeah. Uh, yep. The, 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 there was no barrier in the way at all. But yeah. Yeah. Now, can we recap what's European Collaboration Summits that's happening in May on which dates? Just yes, so the 12th to the 14th of May. Um, so yep. it's uh, the European Collaboration Summit with the sister event as well, which is the Cloud Summit. So they uh, historically ran as two separate events, I think, apart from one time before uh, where it was uh, combined. So yeah, it, it's um, combined in Wiesbaden, Germany. Uh, so yep. for, yeah, 14th to the 16th of May. Um, it's going to be great. I mean, if you're uh, looking to, to, to learn more about collaboration and, and uh, the Microsoft 365 and Copilot and and so on. Then uh, yeah, there's the uh, the magenta color for you, the uh, the, the collaboration summit, <laughs> or you can go across to uh, to the cloud, the blue, and um, yeah, learn about yeah, OpenAI, Azure infrastructure, and, and that sort of thing. Yep. Just yeah, yep. going to be lots. And Wiesbaden is right next to Frankfurt, so the travel will be easy for anybody who is traveling. Well, actually across the world, because Frankfurt is one of the hubs within. Within Europe. And sure. some actually mm -hmm. say that it's faster to get from the airport to Wiesbaden than to actually Frankfurt itself. Probably, yes. That is great. It's a different <laughs> direction, actually. That's a good point. So, <laughs> it, yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, the, the city itself is uh, is amazing. I think we had some great fun in Dusseldorf, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to being back in Wiesbaden too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been two times in Dusseldorf. Two, yes, mm -hmm. two times. Two, three, yeah. two. Oh, I don't know, but yeah, we've been in the past in Wiesbaden two times as well. Uh, once in the from uh, a mine uh, was the one, yeah. and then mm -hmm. yes, and the other one was in Wiesbaden actually. Yeah trying to yeah. memorize this was so, been involved in this setup for a long time as well so <laughs> fantastic but yeah the, the week after as well there's um there's also thriveconf which uh yes. you know if, if you can't get to uh Wiesbaden, um obviously there, there may be things stopping you from, from getting their uh, work commitments and so on but another great event much smaller uh, event but still you get some amazing speakers and yeah, you, you will absolutely be part of that community. They're going to be in the hotel lobby, <laughs> wherever that might be. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's small enough to, to get that experience. Yeah, Strife is really, really cool. And it's so well organized as well. Uh, it's a smaller one in Slovenia, but still, it's it's incredibly well organized, always. So, yeah, it's really cool. yeah, absolutely. Cool. Now, uh, I guess it's time to start uh, catching up or some uh, <laughs> closing into the discussion. But what's happening this week, Brett? Anything interesting? How does your typical week look like? Is this a typical week and, and what's on your schedule? Yeah, so, uh, well, this, this week, very much involved in, uh, in ECS. Um, so uh, yeah, the, uh, the social side of that, we're, we're building the conference magazine, uh, Addis and I and so on. So, um, yeah, there's certainly uh, a, a great deal of commitment to, towards that one. I also need to um, get going with the Collab Days uh, Bletchley Park, which is uh, coming up in, in September. So um, I half-heartedly uh, so far built the uh, the site for that <laughs> and published it. So we need to uh, yeah, polish that and, and get that open so people can start to register to speak and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so yep. that, I guess that's from the uh, sort of community side. Uh, from the, the Lightning Tools side, yeah, we're, we're now settled in our, our new office and um yeah it's it's really sort of uh, further involvement of the products um also from the, the sales and the marketing side here too so uh yeah that's that's really my typical week there could busy, be many hats days. worn but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the kids are back to school as well so so my daughter actually um my, my oldest she she was in helsinki uh yep <laughs> just just last the week, weather so. wasn't quite optimal because it was too, a bit too warm right so the yeah. snow wasn't really that much anymore so no but she 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 did yeah she, she said it i think it's like minus one celsius or something like that yep. but she was yep. uh going to plunge pools and saunas and doing karaoke and, and that sort of thing yep. you know? <laughs> yeah so she she had fun and then well, uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and the younger two they're, they're back to school this week so um Cool. looking forward to that <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah we had the holiday uh, sorry the winter break uh in 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 helsinki last week as well so and we were traveling nice. actually pretty close to eastern border uh, but it's it's yeah that was a really nice uh, there's a really nice location in eastern finland which were targeting for russian tourists uh, mm -hmm. um, at some point but to understandable reasons, the borders are currently closed. So there's, there's yeah. nice locations to visit uh, still. So yeah. for us as well. Good. Yeah. But Waldek, Waldek, what's happening for your table uh, this week? Anything interesting? Big things like end of the month is typically when we ship new things. And it is end, of, our, the end of the month. And it's, and it's the day of once in four years, 29th. Oh yeah, well yes. So this this year on tw on February 29th is going to be the commemorative release yes. <laughs> of a new yes. version of Dev Proxy. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we've got we've got a bunch of Im uh, um, improvements there. Uh, stay tuned for our release on Thursday the 29th. But we also have our, a new release upcoming of CLI for Microsoft 365, and this time we ship something new and something really cool and something that we think is going to help a bunch of folks the ability to use multiple accounts at the same time. So you can yeah. sign in with Perfect. multiple accounts and then easily switch them without having to log in or log out and in again with another account. It's like if you are a consultant as I or wor work with a bunch of uh, ten tenants, you will ho hopefully enjoy that improvement. So that is coming soon, uh, basically in the next few days too. Other than that, we're actually 
I think next week is going to release some new public experiments. So stay tuned for the messaging on that, which, which, which is going to be exciting to see how people react to that. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, business as usual. What about you, Vesa? I can imagine catching up after being week away. Uh, yeah, catching how up is, is, is your always email? hard. How, how many uh, unread emails do you have? <laughs> Be enough. honest. <laughs> enough. 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 All of I, them. I, so I've, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I filter away every single email which I'm not in the to list. Uh, so if it's a group or where I'm seeing it, it goes do away. That? Uh, so uh, that's the only way you can deal with, you know, minimize all of the, the, the additional noise. Um, so, but it, it's still, there's a lot to be catching up on and, and then uh, doing a lot of catching up on community stuff as well. We're doing SPFX, uh, next steps, planning a lot of that stuff. We're doing industry templates and designs, blueprint, designing solutions, a lot of cool stuff on, on that side as well. And MVP summit is coming. Will it be actually yes. in, uh, Redmond, uh, Pret? I will be. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it because. Uh, of yes, yeah, it's going to be my sixth year as an MVP, and I, I went the very first year to uh, to, to MVP summit. Um, yep. I can't remember what happened the second year, but then we we're into COVID, um, so I've only ever <laughs> been <laughs> once in person. Well, I mean, so, yes, uh, you've seen seen Bellevue, you've seen all the places you've yeah. seen. Now we have the new office, so now it's it's yeah, new the, campus. The new campus is yeah, it's it's impressive. Let's put it this is way. Everybody it's, already yes. moved, or are some no. teams still in the old no. building? So uh, all some are in the old ones because, of course, some of the older buildings. Well, they will be renovated, and and they're not try, throwing them away. Uh, so they will be still in use. But uh, MVP Summit is happening in the new campus area. It's not fully completed either, um, oh, but it's cool. still it's it's cool. impressive. It's and there's the what is it? The biggest garage within the US is underneath. Oh, wow. campus, which is like for MVPs okay, that... because because we all MVPs go there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where MVPs. as as yeah. our organization moved over to the to new campus and then it's like yeah sorry I'm late I, I I couldn't find out my way from the garage and you're like wait what there's actually a bus going from the garage to the no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so MVP Summit is in two weeks or so, two weeks, yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. a lot of content planning still and locking down plans and all of that. But well, obviously agendas are out uh, and sessions are out already, but there's still things to get adjusted. So that should be really, really interesting. And, yeah, and I'm really well, looking for, me, for me, it's always nice to drop by at the office as well. Every now and then, not too often, but every now and then. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I look forward to seeing you both there. I think you, you're going well there. Yeah. No, I'm not. Uh, oh, okay. We'll be there. All right. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Please pardon. Please pardon. We'll get there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> anyway, now we're rambling. But thank you everybody for watching and listening uh, on the on the show, on the on the video, or in the podcast format. And thank you, Pret, uh, joining on on the discussion. Really cool to catch you up are. as well. So, thanks, but, thanks so much again for the invite. Appreciate it. And thank and you. on the show, um, I'm saying this out loud with the recording. Pret, you don't hit the shut uh, disconnect. Uh, but we within the show, we'll move into the articles uh, and covering the weekly articles uh, from Microsoft and community. But thanks, Pret. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching on this one. We'll move to the next segment. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Pret, one more time on the on the discussion. Now we can uh, have a really fast run through uh, on the latest articles, what is happening. Um, so let me actually flip the mode a bit in here. So first of all, uh, we've been away. Well, we haven't actually gone through articles that much within the past two weeks or the last time because we recorded that too early because I was out and all of that stuff. Anyway, uh, so um, but what was interesting to say that not that many articles came out during this two weeks uh, episode. So it's clearly it is a a winter holiday or family break time in US as well, and that or impacts something's coming. Something's coming, and there's you know the silence before the storm. Well, yeah, that. That's always the one thing, but it's also true that a lot of people in Redmond has been out within past week. Uh, so it's it's uh, Redmond school districts are having these weeks as the the break weeks. So I don't know if you knew that, Valdek, but anyway. Um, <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. Now you do. Anyway, uh, so on February 13th, there was making our channel of AI products safer for consumers. Uh, good that we're focusing on this one as well. But we've been releasing a lot of uh, AI features and functionalities, which are by the way free uh, for consumers. Uh, and, and it's good to actually consider those uh, security and 
privacy uh, aspects as well. Uh, and what does the responsible AI actually means and how do we improve uh, the results um, on the AI all the time. So good article from a summit on that one. We also had an article related on prompt like a pro, stay in the top of your chats with Copilot Teams. Um, so uh, a bit of a prompt guidance uh, for Microsoft Teams as we are as you are hopefully using them. If you have access on Copilot, you can use the Copilot to summarize chats and meetings and all of that. And it's good to understand the right ways of asking things and what has happened. So there's a lot of, lot of actually, so the, the difference between Copilot for Microsoft 365 is that it's there's a lot of system prompts behind of the scenes already done by Microsoft. So there's a lot of adjustments on that. So you don't have to you know, do the full massive scale of prompts architecting like you need to do in OpenAI, uh, but it's, it's, it's still good to understand how to get the right results. We also had an article around introducing a new community hub for content management. This is actually good. This should provide a bit of clarity on uh, the, the different products and capabilities what we have. So uh, we're bundling in SharePoint and SharePoint Premium and, for example, Microsoft 365 Archive capabilities under a one hub within the tech community. <clears throat> it's not yet alive, but it's actually going to be released on Tuesday, 20, February 27th, which is exactly the day when the podcast and the video is actually getting released. So uh, took a while to figure out that, oh, OK, not yet, but it's going to be this is a preview announcement, right? Um, there was also uh, a uh, or a encouragement from uh, Mike uh, from Sandra around joining the Microsoft Advanced Content Management Advocates Initiative. So just like kind of an um, add-on initiative on top of MVP and all of that stuff uh, for focusing uh, on the content management features and capabilities. It basically means to share point premium uh, features, um, and if people would be interested on more closely being involved with the product group and product marketing to promote uh, the upcoming features. Great opportunity uh, for a lot of people to sign up. Good, good, good. Uh, we also had an article on SharePoint Premium Translation, which is now generally available. Leon actually had a blog post on this one as well. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so you can actually translate documents on fly directly from the UX. Classic extension. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. We've been seeing this in the past as well because technically, well, it's it's uh, anyway. I'm not going to go too much details. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was also an uh, article on the latest version of uh, the Teams Toolkit for, for Visual Studio. Seventeen point nine is now out. Uh, so the, the Visual Studio one is different than the Visual Studio Toolkit. So it's good to understand that they're moving in the different stu stu Studio Code. Sorry, okay. Visual Studio yeah. Code. Yes, exactly. So, uh, but it's good to understand that they're moving in a bit of a different uh, sequence. Um, and then this is basically listing all of the goodness and capabilities which have been included in there. There was a reminder also on the REST APIs on Outlook uh, deprecation. So that's getting decommissioned, which means end of life, just to be super clear. Deprecation means that, hey, we're not going to invest in decommission. End of life means they're gone. They don't it's exist gone. anymore. Yes. Uh, there's also breaking changes. It's Microsoft Cooking Craft uh, API. So this is uh, in beta. Oh, in beta and in V1. So that is a bit of a challenge. Um, no, no, no. So no, 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 no. The beta, endpoints the are available in beta and V1, yes. but changes yes. are only in beta. Correct. Okay, that's what I'm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Cute. Cute. <laughs> Shocking. Yes, indeed, indeed. Don't do breaking changes in V1. <laughs> now, uh, on the Power Automate, there was an update on the, the uh, February update on what's happening on the desktop side. So what are the new features on that side? There was also announcing preview of locking unmanaged customizations. So this is actually a great administrative feature for Power Apps. So avoiding, well, unmanaged sh customizations. Sh sh shadow IT? Correct, correct. And, and yeah, because there's always a cost related on maintaining all of those things as well. Now, this one is interesting. Uh, so um, just going to, uh, once again, to say one thing in the chat, because I will be two minutes late from my meeting. Uh, meeting. Uh, da, 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 da. Choo, choo, choo. There we go. Cool. Uh, so this one's interesting. This is, um, this is all of so, this is live. <laughs> this is live. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, so this is actually really cool. So what the Power Platform is doing is that they're providing a in the text box they're providing a Copilot extensibility option. Um, and this is something actually what 
Microsoft 365 should be doing all up as well. Even for, you know, Actually, SPFX. Actually, it text should boxes be available and... in Edge if you ask. Exactly. Me, a browser feature that just attaches yes. to a, a text area. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Uh, maybe even again, the whole form at some point. Yes. Yes. Because it, it's a text box. And if you need yes. some guidance or input and inspiration, Traffic Copilot. That's it. Done. Uh, so yeah. that's a really, really great, great feature. Uh, on other news, uh, so SharePoint Framework has had its anniversary uh, seven years uh, from GA. Wow. That's a pretty long time. And the, the wildest thing here is that it still keeps on growing. So the usage just keeps on skyrocketing. It's just mind boggling to see that. So and just, to, and we're, just, just to check, like, would you still be able to run your SPFX V1 GA app or, yes, today? Yes, you can. Yes. Seven years. That's yes. unheard of. Yes. Well, that's the. That there's a lot of lot of technical, let's say, planning and architecture behind of the scenes, making sure that if you build something on a version 1.0 and SPFX, it still works and runs within your portal. And that's a mind-boggling backward compatibility in the uh, in enterprise level. So which yeah, you will be able to build an SPFX. You might not be able to get the dependencies and the version of Node, maybe with Docker, just to get the whole tool chain from seven years back. True. But again, on the SPFX if, side, if you have the SPPKG, that still works. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. If you have a web part which somebody built seven years ago and you don't even have a source code for it, you cannot, you know, recompile and that's that's all good. But the web part that's deployed, it will yeah, still work. work. Yeah. So that, that's actually that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, preparing mode uh, driven apps for dark mode icons. This is a good call from uh, Alex related on how to how to think about uh, the dark mode as well. Because you know, if you have a black icons and then you fall back on the dark mode, flip um, and it's no gone. icons. So no icons indeed. Good, good, good. Uh, uh, Martin links to had a new blog post related on resource specific consent using delegate sites selected and an important feature uh, and new capability which is now available which is dedicated support for sites selected capabilities not only for app only which is really really cool. Uh, we also had a blog post from uh, Tommy uh, around how to fix PyHole blocking Azure OpenAI calls. What is this? What is what is blocking? So, what where? So PyHole is a appliance, or is appliance that you, or it's a solution that you can run on uh, Raspberry Pi that allows you to block ads. And the way it works is that you have a block list, basically list of domains that are blocked. Apparently, yep. in this case, Tom, Tom used used a list that for some reason blocks calls to Azure Open a AI. And if you happen to use yep. the same list, you might be saying like, why does my app not work? And it's really hard to link to link it to the fact that, oh, it's my Pi hole, which is made for blocking, blocking ads, blocking yep. my Azure Open AI calls. Really yep. weird thing, but it only shows, you know, that you really need to keep that in mind too. Yep, yep, really, really cool. Now, Xiao Ferreira uh, has been doing a nice series on February related on blocking every single day. And I think this one was yeah, February 23rd, how to hide an unassigned item buckets from the board view in Microsoft List. So Microsoft List has this new board view, um, and then you can actually do functionalities and configuration options on it as well. So there's, there's a lot of, lot of innovation having on the Microsoft List uh, all the time. There was also a Leon Armstrong blog post related on translated documents with SharePoint Premium document translation. So this is uh, his experiences on how it actually works uh, after now the feature is, is out, which is really, really cool. So click translate and you're able to actually get the documents translated directly uh, within the UX. That's really, really, cool. really, really cool. Um, BMPJS had the new version 3.22.3.23. <laughs> so they're working on a version four, which is, should be coming out as well. Um, but the, this is super widely used. That the percentage is, is well, the usage is mind boggling on BMPJS yeah. as well. It's awesome to see one of the. It's one of those super successful open source projects used by thousands and thousands of people. Really, really cool. Shane had a new video related on hands-on copilot in Excel, uh, VPA, private charts, and formulas. So explaining uh, what, what the copilot actually works in Excel. Uh, VPA, oh, wow. It's not a capital P. No. Um, <laughs> it's a capital P in SharePoint, not in copilot. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, that's a <clears throat> term. Uh, there's a 
a lot of ongoing discussions in Twitter related on terminology, what we're using. Now, uh, by coincidence, uh, Paolo actually had a similar kind of video. So Copilot for Microsoft 365 in Microsoft Excel. How does that work and how did that behave? Really, really cool. Uh, also, new video from the Simpraxis uh, team uh, on the Microsoft Teams templates. So what they are, how you can create them, how you can do them, what's the value out of them. So, and these are really, really uh, useful sessions. They are actually live sessions, which they record and then share it to YouTube. So. Uh, and April had a new video related on creating multilingual Copilot in just five minutes with Copilot Studio. Uh, it is incredibly powerful tool. Uh, it's awesome to see the innovation on that side as well. A lot of Copilot stuff. And then how to create an image gallery in SharePoint using the list column formatting. So again, list formatting, JSON, no code, JSON, you know, definitions on how to do an image gallery. And I think we have a good good picture. Actually pretty and cool, output. Yeah. yeah. So without code, you can adjust things pretty efficiently and then present things. And just a reminder, uh, the sample solution gallery, a lot of, lot of new samples here uh, getting uh, published all the time. Uh, 1,864 uh, total yeah. number of samples. It's, it's just, insane, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. And luckily, we have a good search capabilities of finding the relevant sample for you. But it's mind boggling how many samples there are actually available for people to use. So, so let, let's just use GitHub to find the relevant sample. Let's not. So. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, and actually, what's really, really cool is that there are ways for you to be able to find these samples from within your Microsoft 365 10 and 2, and yes. even True. using Copilot from Microsoft 365. True. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, that's actually a good, good example uh, of how can we uh, co-pilot for Microsoft 365. I know that it's actually somebody called Waldeck actually wrote that one. <laughs> uh, so we should be able to find it. Can we? Can we find it? Can we? I think you can more easily find if you go to Microsoft Graph Connectors. Oh, that's true. I'm in a wrong. Uh, no, no. I mean, you should, it should come up in Copilot too, but there are few, few, fewer examples here. So, yep. and there's actually number one. There you go. Yep. There we go. And there it is, really good example of how to get those samples exposed in Copilot and in the search uh, of your tenant. Anyway, I guess that's it for now. Uh, pretty short and quick one uh, for the articles, uh, which is good. But thank you, Pret, for joining one more time. Uh, please use hashtag PMP Weekly in Twitter or in LinkedIn. We're trying to always catch you, capture all of those articles which are using that in the weekly show. And I guess that's it. We'll be back within a week. Right, Valdek? Absolutely. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.